so let's just do um, a little grounding. I feel like, did I not teach? I don't think we, we were together last week. So let's do a little grounding, some check in with your body. So seated in a comfortable position, either uh, with your eyes opened or closed, either way, but just start to focus on your lower body, feeling the weight of your body. And notice where your shoulders are without changing anything. Just notice how the shoulder area feels right going into the neck. Are your shoulders elevated or pulled forward? How does your jaw feel? The muscles of your face. Notice what's going on in your hips and legs. Feel where your hands are. Just notice what is beneath your hands. And as you continue to bring awareness to the state of your body in this moment, you might notice some things shifting on their own. Perhaps uh, letting go in certain places. And noticing too, in your body, are there any places that feel constricted? In Hebrew, the word for a narrow place is mitzar, as in mitzrayim, as in Egypt. And then noticing too, are there any places in your body that feel expansive, that feel spacious? In Hebrew, merchav. As you invite the breath through the nose, as you take a deeper breath, notice the places that fill and open a little more easily, that sense of merchav or spaciousness. As you exhale, letting all the air out. Let the breath be more an exploration, a traveling into the wilderness of your breath, rather than anything forced. As we practice yoga today, we're, we're going to work with the body as a metaphor for the wilderness. So much is, of what we don't know is in that wilderness. So many mysteries are inside of our bodies. And sometimes it takes courage to go within to our bodies a little more deeply and to listen more deeply to discover what it is that our bodies need in, in any moment or in general in the big picture. Sometimes when we go in, when we move lech lecha to just go forth, we go forth with curiosity into the deep place within. We discover other wildernesses like the, the psyche, the emotional self, our spirit, and we may find some surprises there as well. We may stumble upon some new treasure that helps us continue to take the next step in our journey.
So the body itself is, is limited, right? It's this little small unit. And in, in itself, it's a sense, in the, in, in the body itself is the sense of Mitzrayim, of constriction, of limitedness. However, the body is a home for our soul and the soul is merhab, the soul is spacious. And we get to live inside of this body for a certain amount of time as a way to explore the infinite. So let's start to bring some movement to the body now from your seated position, inhaling, breathing into your nose, reaching your arms up, and exhaling your hands to your heart and make the breaths nice and deep. So breathe in, fill up as much as you can. Exhale. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, take a little twist. Let the hands come down. On your own, going from side to side, breathing at a pace that feels natural for you as you match your movements to the breath. Notice what you feel in your shoulders. Do the shoulders feel narrow? Do they have any constriction? Is there spaciousness in the shoulder joints? When your hands come up overhead, go ahead and keep them there. And then start to take the hands apart, palms face away. Do some big shoulder, I mean um, finger spreading and, uh, and what is that what are these called your wrists <laughs> it's one of those days <laughs> just do big circles all the way down <laughs> good inhale reach up again and then again exhale start to spread the hands rotate the wrists and really open those fingers as wide as you can get lots of movement in the forearms good Good, and then bring the hands to the knees now and just round the back, do a little seated cat cow. So tuck the tailbone, bring your chin to your chest. And then as you inhale, open up the heart, create spaciousness across the chest, breathe in. Exhale, rounding, tucking, inhaling. On your own, just continue this exploration of the spine. The spine is like the wilderness. We have so much going on in the spine, all the nerves that come out of the spine and innervate the organs in our body. Good, let's do one more. Cat cow. Good, and then come to sitting just straight up and then chin to chest and just like you're drawing a line from one side of your collarbone across the chest to the other side. It's a little different than when you roll your head side to side. So think of drawing a line all the way from one tip of the collarbone to the other. Good, and then look straight up. And then ear to shoulder, you choose. Allow the head just to rest in this little side bend. Breathe into the side of the neck and the front of the neck. You can tilt your chin a little bit upward to get into that space. Good, now roll your head forward and over to the other side. Pausing in your neck side bend and breathe. Tilt the chin just a little bit upward. And then roll the chin toward the chest. Good. Look straight ahead. Some big shoulder circles in both directions. All right, so today's class, if you um, popped on after class started, today's class is a 45 minute class. So we're gonna be really selective about what we do with our time today. 
So we've got some chilly chilliness in the air. We're going to warm up the body and also energize the body if it's feeling a little tired today. So from standing, we'll do some just some nice standing twists. Make sure your heel comes off the floor as you twist and you look over your shoulder. And then you can tap the chest and the lower back with soft fists. Full deep breaths. Good. And then let your twisting come to stillness. We're going to use our massage ball today, so go ahead and grab that and just start to work the bottom of your right foot. And just take this time while you're working on your foot to think of all of the journeys you have been on thus far in your life, where these feet have taken you. Tap into some gratitude for your feet. Let the foot move from side to side on, on the ball just to create spaciousness and um, mobility between the bones of the feet. And work the inside of the arch. And as you work the inside of the arch, you're working with uh, acupressure points for the spine. So noticing any spots that feel a little tender, feel free to pause there and breathe. Good. And then go ahead and take your foot off the ball and just stand with your feet about hip width apart in mountain pose. <sighs> Taking a moment to really notice the difference between the two sides. You might even roll your weight to your outer feet and then to the inner feet and walk forward and back and just notice the quality of connection and the difference between the two sides. And then when you're ready, go ahead and change over to the left foot. Letting that ball work its way across the, uh, the ball of the foot, the base of the toes. Getting into the inner edge of your foot that connects to the spine. And reconnect to your breath. So let nice deep full breaths come in through the nose. And as you exhale, just relax anything that doesn't need to be working right now. Good. All right, go ahead and move the ball off of the mat, off to the side, and once again stand in mountain pose. And bend the knees slightly. 
And just feeling now, hopefully, a little more balance between the two sides. We'll come into some uh, rocking. So I'm turning sideways so you can just see what I'm doing. We've done this before. You're going to bend the knees and inhale, rise up onto the toes. And then as you exhale, palms come back behind you and the knees bend. Belly's pulled in. Inhale up and exhale back. So the knees are soft. The arms are also soft. So think of the arms as if they're traveling through warm water. And your pace is going to match your inhale and exhale. So everyone will be look different. You don't have to keep my pace. We'll take a few of these, noticing how the weight wants to distribute along the base or the base of your toes. Can you keep it equal? Good, let's do one more. Slowly letting the hands fall toward the lap. Good. I'm gonna open up the legs a little wide now, a little wider, much wider than hip width really, and the toes are gonna face 10 and two if you're standing on a clock face. So that when you bend your knees, You've got a little squat here, but you're activating your glutes. So as you press your knees toward your little toes, you will probably feel your glutes firing a bit more and then the legs will warm up too. So if you've been doing a lot of exercise, we can work out some of that lactic acid in the legs. And if you're cold, you can warm up through this exercise. So we're gonna first just have our hands on the hips and just come into a little bit of a, a squat and then a stand. As you stand, squeeze your tush and try not to lock out your knees. So you're gonna bend and press into your feet as you rise up and squeeze your tush. Good, couple more. We're inhaling down, exhaling up. Good, we're gonna come into whatever level of a squat you would like today. If you wanna work heat in the body, you can come into a deep squat or you can take a nice light a light squat if you're taking care of your knees for any reason you've got something going on there we're going to do hara breath so we're going to inhale as we're reaching up through the nose exhale ha. okay and you don't have to keep my pace if you need to slow it down if you're getting a little dizzy or over oxygenated you can just slow down grab the energy bring it in up with life force let go of anything that you don't need two more good and step your legs together mountain pose shoulders back and down Notice to shift in your energy. Good. Let's take a couple of standing poses. So we'll start with our right foot as our lead and we'll come into warrior two. So the right foot comes forward, the back leg is extended and the leg is turned in the back leg is turned in go ahead and bend your knee however deep feels right for you today look at your knee as you bend make sure it's tracking over your ankle and toward your second and, and third toe not caving in pull your belly in and then touch your shoulders and just feel where your shoulders are in space sometimes we lean into a warrior two I'd like you to imagine that your shoulders, feel them coming up out of your hips, okay? So you're stacked. And then open up those arms and then flip your palms so they face up. So here we are in warrior two, gazing over the right hand 
and feel the expansiveness across your chest, your collarbones, this merhav, this openness. Knowing too that an open heart also takes courage and can be feel it very, very vulnerable, just like the Israelites felt when they went out into the wilderness, had no idea what was waiting for them. We have no idea what's happening in the next moment in our lives. How can we find strength? How can we root down into the strength of our ancestors, of the earth, of ourselves, so that we can face our own wilderness? Drop your back hand. And lift your front hand now and come into a reverse warrior. So you're reaching up to the heavens. You're feeling your feet on the floor. That knee stays bent. The front knee stays bent. Breathe here. Gratitude for breath. And float back to warrior two. Go ahead and straighten that front leg. It's probably pretty warm by now. And then step your feet together. Make sure you have blocks in front of you if you would like them for a forward fold or a chair. It was fine too, uh, the seat of a chair. We're going to inhale, reach up. Exhale, dive forward, let it all go. You can bend your knees as much as you need to and release your head. And as we release the head and the weight of it, we create space. We create spaciousness between the vertebrae. They can get really, really constricted with just our daily practices they can get pretty constricted so just breathing into the neck in the back giving it some space to release pull your belly in so really engage the belly Press into both feet as you slide your hands. You look up, slide your hands up your legs, and then out to the sides. Breathe in. Exhale your hands to your heart. Go ahead and bring your feet together. Your legs zip them up. Zip them all up. Squeeze the thighs, squeeze the tush. Bring your arms up overhead and clasp your hands and release your index fingers. As you keep your belly pulled in and your lower body really planted and solid, lean over to one side and open up into those ribs as you breathe. On your exhale, float back up. Take a breath here. As you exhale, lean over to the other side. Breathe here. And on your exhale, float back up. Good, and now come into a forward fold again, like a swan diving forward. You can open up your stance a little bit and release once more. And then start to look up and come on up with your flat back. Open your arms to the sky, hands to your heart. Good, let's take our warrior two on the second side. So left foot and knee are in the lead here. Make sure you line up your front heel with your back arch and feel your feet first rooted into the earth, into your mat. Feel your hips, grow your spine really like really tall, shoulders right over the hips and then open up into your warrior two. You're gazing over that right, I mean left hand and then flip the palms up. So we get some external rotation in those shoulders and breathe into the heart. Drop your back hand and lift the front arm up into your exalted warrior or reverse warrior. Breathe here. And then float the hands back to warrior two. Bring them to your heart. Good, and then keep your legs wide. 
We're gonna turn the toes all in, inward, to face forward. Nice wide stance. And we'll come into our wide-legged forward fold here with or without blocks, whatever works for you. And squeeze your thighs, so squeeze your quads so that your kneecaps kind of lift up. And that's gonna create space in the back of the legs. So you notice there's this relationship between constriction and expansion. The, in yoga, this is not a bad thing. They need each other. We can't be walking around just a bunch of loose ligaments and nothing would stay put. We have to have something tight on one side so that the other side can have the freedom to open. And how might that be true in other places in our lives? where we might need to have boundaries and limitations in order to experience true freedom as a result. Let's take another couple of breaths here. Open up your jaw and just give it a nice stretch as you're down here. Good, and then press into your hands so that you can slowly start to rise up. You can walk your feet together first, and then come on up. Good, and then bring your feet together. We're gonna do our three thumps um, under the collarbones first. Soft knees, big breaths in and out, in the nose, out through the mouth. and then start to tap or thump on the chest and bring a smile to your lips and let out a nice long ah. Ah. Good. And then start to knock on the rib cage or you can just massage it with your knuckles. And just tap there. Good, and then just start to shake it out. Just shake everything in a way that feels safe for your body. See if you can get some places to move that maybe have been feeling a little tight. Maybe, maybe you can make some noise too, a uh, little bouncy sounds. Let your tongue get soft in your mouth. Uh, let yourself make some weird sounds. Uh, I can't hear you. I will one day hear you, but I can't hear you right now. Uh, good. Just shake it out. Yes. Good. Shake, shake, shake. And then start to let your Shaking come to stillness. I like it. If you want to keep shaking, go for it. <laughs> Sometimes we just got some extra wiggles in there, right? <laughs> Good. And notice what's happening in the landscape of your body now, in this wilderness of your body. We are going to make our way onto our backs. So make sure you have, a, if you usually use a blanket for Shavasana, uh, make sure you have that nearby for when we get to that. Right now we're gonna come onto our backs. And we'll take a figure four stretch. So let's bring the right ankle over the left knee holding onto the back of your leg, or maybe just even having your left foot on the floor is enough as you press your right knee away from your body.
gonna go ahead and release this side and switch over to the other side. Take your time. Maybe releasing those ankles while you're here. Noticing your jaw, could the jaw soften a little bit more? Could the muscles between your eyebrows soften? Could you have a little more expansiveness there? Go ahead and release this. You can keep your feet on the floor and your knees bent and um, your blocks are near, hopefully, to help you with this if you need it. But we're going to bring the feet together and open up the knees. So we're taking a supine butterfly pose. And if that's too much on your inner thighs, there's a couple of ways to support that are, are really helpful. So you can either prop your blocks up underneath in any height, really, um, under your knees. Or if you're not using blocks, another really great trick is to make soft fists and just rock your hips from side to side and scoop those fists under your glutes on either side. It makes a really big difference. Offers some support there if you'd rather do that. Like sometimes you're between like needing a block and maybe needing something smaller. So coming into whatever version of this open uh, open knee pose and if this doesn't feel like it's a, a pose that you need today please feel free to do something else while we're taking this uh, shape if you're in this shape with me you can focus on your lower belly as you breathe in let it rise and fill like a balloon and as you exhale, just effortless release of the breath. Take three more breaths in this shape, whatever shape you're in. And at the end of your three breaths, you can support those knees as you bring them back up to center. And then hug your knees into your chest, stretching out that lower back. So when we bent forward in our wide-legged forward fold, we focused on that neck area, the upper back and neck, creating spot, uh, space in the vertebrae, between the vertebrae. Here in this, knee hug just noticing the lower back and as you breathe in you can hold this shape breathe in and imagine with that inhale you're just creating space to be created in the lower back and notice at the same time there's constriction in the belly right you're squeezing the knees in but constriction in the belly in this case supports digestion so we have a benefit to both. Constriction and limitation in one area equals expansion and freedom in another. Go ahead and bring your feet to the floor now and then take a twist to one side. So you can lift those hips and move them over a little bit before you bring the knees down helps make the twist a little less intense. And just twist to one side, opening up your arms, gazing over one shoulder, so your whole spine is in a full twist.
gazing straight up, pull the belly in and start to bring those knees back through center, switching over to the other side. Bring your gaze to look straight up again, engage the belly, slowly bring those knees back to center. See if there's anything else that you might need, another knee to chest or maybe something else. Just check in with your body before you settle into Shavasana and create whatever space is going to really help you release for these next few moments. And if you haven't moved towards stillness, you're welcome to do that now. Scanning your body once again as we did in the beginning of class, noticing any places in the body of of mitsar, of narrowness or constriction. And noticing places of expansiveness and space, space, merhav. Journeying into the wilderness, into the unknown, can feel scary and especially meaningful right now as we move into post-pandemic times. But just like the Israelites who carried everything they needed on their back, remember that you have everything inside of you that you need at all times. You have what is important. You have the inner resources and you have the support for whatever your journey is.
Praise Dor you Adonai, sovereign of the universe, in whose hand is every living soul and the breath of humankind. Baruch Atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech asher beyado nefesh kochai veruach kobesarish. Praise your you Adonai, sovereign of the universe. In whose hand is every living soul and the breath of humankind and the breath of humankind. Begin to notice the weight of your body being held by gravity. Notice your breath as you deepen it and as you begin to awaken your senses and as you start to move your body in a way that brings you to a seated position. your hands to rest at your heart. I'm giving thanks to yourself for taking this time to support your soul, your body, your emotions. And we close our practice today with our universal blessing. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free. May all beings be loved. And may all beings have peace. May it be so. Kenyahi Ratson. Shalom.